This movie is wonderful. Five years later I still watch it once or twice a year. It's entertaining. I still think it's cool to make popular movies into Lego movies. People want something creative. The second Lego movie is even better than the original. A sophisticated new adventure that gives us a new look at how the universality of the Lego universe was more gendered than we thought. There's hilarious voice work artistry, ceaselessly invented pop culture riffs, ooh, reference. Says someone, eyeball popping graphics and a 107 minute non-stop gag storm of a screenplay from Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. My favorite moment of superfluous script brilliance comes when an intensely annoying teenage vampire announces in a sensitive voice. I also DJ on the side and why women's jeans my only qualification is that the Lego figures are permitted a supernatural ability to operate in the live action real world of the family's house, which is arguably a bit of a cheat, but that's done with great wit, like everything else. We left the first movie on a note of existential anxiety. The kid in the real world basement is informed that from now on his younger sister will be playing in the creatures of the Lego universe were horrified by the appearance of Duplo, great big blocks with new pinky cutesy collars. The masculine world of Lego was threatened. From left, Batman, voiced by Warnett, Talbeard, Nick Offerman, Lucy Slash Wild Steel, Elizabeth Banks, and Unicity, Alice and Bree. From left, Batman, voiced by Warnett, Talbeard, Nick Offerman, Lucy Slash Wild Steel, Elizabeth Banks, and Unicity, Alice and Bree. Photograph. AP the Duplo figures are, in fact, resident in a distant spaceship and make irregular incursions that the indigenous Lego creatures consider to be hugely aggressive. After years of bigger warfare, their hometown has been grimly renamed Apocalypseburg, a heckish place to live. No longer is everything awesome, and the chipper singing of Emmett, tremendously voiced by Chris Pratt, is out of joint with the times. He is increasingly considered inappropriate to what Apocalypseburg needs, a tough warrior. This is especially true of Lucy, Elizabeth Banks, a bit of who not so secretly despises Emmett's inability to master stereotypically manly mannerisms. Then the creatures of Duplo arrive with an order. Apocalypseburg's foremost citizens must travel to the distant outpost of Soister to attend a wedding. Their enemies lead to Queen Whatever and Abbey, voiced by Tiffany Haddish, has imperiously announced her desire to get hitched to Apocalypseburg's most eligible unmarried man. Batman, gruelingly voiced by Warnett, who furiously announces that he wishes to remain a bachelor. Is this an overture of friendship or an insidious plan to undermine our hero's masculine toughness and self-reliance with the girly stratagem of the wedding? There is no doubt about it. Some of the protagonists are beguiled by the avowedly feminized concept of a lavish wedding, but Emmett's own crisis of masculinity appears solved by the appearance of Toth, a tractably stubbled adventurer ex dangerist also voiced by Pratt, who keeps curtly telling everyone he doesn't want to explain his backstory before doing just that. TLN2 is speckled with references to 2001, a space odyssey, the Stargate has become the Stargate, which leads to the disturbing world beyond the basement, to the Toy Stories under the Matrix. The characters are periodically besieged by worries about the reality of what they experience and by their own inevitable obsolescence. They are terrified of being banished to the exotic land of 